All right, what's going on? My name's Kyler, and today I'm gonna to share with you guys some of my road trip tips and tricks for prepping. We went on a 2,000 mile road trip from Orlando, Florida to Sevierville, Tennessee, and also drove a lot there in the mountains. So it was a great time, and the 340 handled it like a champ. So take care of your car, and it'll take care of you. And in this video, I'm gonna give you guys my tips and tricks for road trip prep, and just making sure that the car is dialed in for the trip and that we won't have any problems. And my car is a stage two plus, so it's pretty heavily modified, has an upgraded fuel pump, all these extra goodies in the engine bay. So therefore I'm already staying on top of my maintenance a lot. And for this trip, I definitely did not wanna slack on that because I just wanted to make sure that we made it there and back in one piece and didn't have any issues. Without further ado, let's get into the rest of the video. I'm gonna show you guys my road trip prep and hopefully this helps you if you're going on a road trip soon. To start off my trip on the right foot, I want a clean car inside and out. So I'm just gonna walk you all through my process. So I just washed my car last week, so it wasn't dirty enough to need a full wash. So I went ahead to use this new rinseless wash from PNS Detailing called Absolute. It's a very similar product to O&R if you're familiar with that, as I've used it on my channel before. And all it requires is a 256 to one dilution ratio. So that's just over two capfuls in my two and a half gallons of water. I should have shaken the bottle up before, but it's fine because I can just mix it in using my microfiber. And then in my bucket with my Absolute, I will also have a grit guard and about seven to 10 microfibers as I don't want to reuse one. I'll demonstrate how I do my rinseless wash on the rear section of my car. So I also added a 256 to one mixture into my IK Multi Pro sprayer to pre-treat the area. The purpose of this is so that the polymers in the Absolute can encapsulate the dirt to make the contact wash less abrasive on the surface of the paint. It kind of like acts like a shield surrounding the dirt. Now I'll take a microfiber from the bucket and wring it out until it's just barely dripping. Then mainly using a one side per swipe, wipe the dirt away and discard the towel into another bucket once every side has been used. That way I'm not reintroducing contamination onto the paint and increasing the risk for scratches. Then I'll follow up with a clean drying towel and some drying aid for added protection and gloss. And that's it. I'll go around and do this on the whole car from top to bottom and the car will be about 95% clean uh, because to get it 100% clean, you know, you need pressure washer and all those goodies to, to do that. Now I'll move on to the interior, the most important part because my girlfriend and I are about to spend 10 to 11 hours in my car, so I want to have a clean and enjoyable ride. So I'm starting off by cleaning my WeatherTech floor mats. I'm just going to pre-soak them with some Green Star. This is just some all-purpose cleaner, degreaser. And we'll go ahead and spray that in. This will remove all the dirt. Once I rinse the mats down, I'll go ahead and spray some more Green Star on my Tough Shine tire brush and go ahead and use this for the mats to get them nice and clean, spray them off and then set them in the sun to dry. So now I'm starting inside using a shot vac and compressed air simultaneously to remove all the dirt and dust from my interior. This gets most of the heavy lifting done already and so I can just go in with my cleaner and my brush afterwards. So now I'm gonna use my Detail Factory soft bristle brush along with all surface cleaner from Coach Kemi. I like using this interior cleaner because it's safe on all interior surfaces and leaves an OEM streak free finish. And that way, you know, if I accidentally get it on my Alcantara, it's no big deal at all. You can also use this on the infotainment screen and it won't do anything to the screen or leave any streaking behind. The Detail Factory brush allows me to get into all the crevices with ease for a nice and deep clean. And I love these brushes. I'll leave a link in the description for all the products that I'm using for your convenience. Next on the doors, I wanted to switch it up and utilize some PNS Express Interior Cleaner, which is another great cleaner. It leaves a nice matte streak free finish and it also has a nice smell to it as well. Some people kind of debate the smell, but I think it smells good and it smells like a clean car. And then also all the microfibers that I'm using are from the Rag Company. Shout out to them. I'll leave a link to their website and all their products down below too. 
Moving on to the leatherette on the seats, I wanted to use my Color Lock Artificial Leather Cleaner and Protectant for a nice deep clean and an added layer of protection on our road trip. This stuff works great and leaves the seats looking and feeling brand new. So here I went ahead and just rinsed out one of my Detail Factory brushes to go ahead and use that on the seats as I don't have any like stains or anything heavy duty that needs to be removed, pretty much just a surface clean. However, if you have stains or something that needs to be removed, you can go ahead and use the Color Lock brush. It's a, it's a bristle brush, it's a lot more abrasive, so that can also be used if you have heavier staining on the seats. And then once it's cleaned, I'll use a slightly damp microfiber to go ahead and wipe up the cleaner. Now onto the Color Lock protectant. So all you need to do is apply this either to the seat or a microfiber and just rub it in. Very simple and leaves a nice layer of protection on the vinyl or fake leather. I highly recommend these products for any type of interior you have. Obviously they do have real leather cleaners and this artificial one as well. They have Alcantara cleaners and protectants. So all very great products and they work really well. If you didn't know, I'm running a stud conversion kit for my wheels from Motorsport Hardware. I think it looks better with the studs and it also makes taking the wheels off a lot easier because you can rest it on the studs. So before a very long road trip, I wanted to ensure that each stud was properly torqued along with the lug nuts as well. It's always good to check your studs every once in a while and if you do a lot of racing or track events, it's also a good idea to replace them after a few events. So I did this the easy way without using a jack and just took off one lug nut at a time and retorqued each stud to 26 foot pounds. 25 foot pounds is the recommendation from Motorsport Hardware, but I wanted to make sure they were good. So I went ahead with 26 foot pounds. Also, if you were to take the entire wheel off and jack up the car, then you have to kind of like hold the rotor in place. Otherwise the wheel will spin when you go to torque the studs. So just kind of leaving the wheels on the ground and doing one at a time is actually kind of easier. So I actually did have a few that came a tiny bit loose over time. Nothing major though, but definitely the rear wheels since my car is a rear wheel drive and it's pushing a decent amount of power. So those, it's a good thing I did check them. Then I ensured each lug nut was properly torqued to 105 foot pounds which is also what Motorsport Hardware recommends for their lug nuts. So this way I have the peace of mind that none of these studs or lugs should back out on our road trip and potentially have a wheel come flying off while driving, as that would be a very bad day, <laughs> something that nobody wants to deal with. Also, one more tip pertaining to the wheels from the GOAT, my buddy Ben, or Shame, S55 on Instagram. I made sure to inflate my tires to 40 PSI all around to have the most even and least amount of wear on our long drive. He's a BMW tech and he recommends this to me as this is what BMW does for their customers, new cars or new tires. Now let's review some of the gear that I'm bringing with me to have just in case. I have this plastic bin filled with my car detailing items, BMW coolant and spare oil. B58s love to drink coolant over time mainly distilled water that's evaporating and potentially consume some oil on our long drive. So I wanted to have those items just in case, especially since I was driving the tail of the dragon and doing a lot of hard, aggressive driving. I wanted to make sure I had enough coolant or distilled water to refill those reservoirs. I did check all my oil levels throughout the trip and it always confirmed I had enough oil, which is good. Additionally, I brought a couple more gallons of distilled water to have for the coolant reservoirs and to do some detailing. I also brought jumper cables, a set of trim tools, gloves, and a breaker bar with a 17 millimeter socket for the wheels, just in case. I brought my tool set as well, just to have mostly any tool I would need to fix something on the car, whether it was a piece of aero or something in the engine bay. Then I brought a trash bag filled with microfibers for some rinseless detailing and a bucket with more distilled water and my IK multi-sprayer inside. I also brought one of these emergency tire repair kits just in case anything were to happen to a tire in those mountain roads. I would be able to at least fix the tire and drive to a shop nearby. I do have AAA as well, but I didn't want to take any chances being in a remote location and having to wait on them. So this kit will flow like a slime, if you will, <laughs> into uh, the tire and patch it while also reinflating it. I could guess this probably isn't good for the rim if it gets on it, 
but you know, I'd rather have this to be safe than sorry. So that's pretty much all of the just in case road trip repair items I wanted to bring. And it was probably overkill, but you know, it was nice to have that peace of mind that I had all the tools that I would need just in case. All right, we just made it to the Smoky Mountains in the F30 B58. Traveled around 670 miles, so almost 700 mile trip. And B58 handled it just fine. And so thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it helps you out uh, with your upcoming road trip if you're going on one and just all the prep that I did. It's worked so far, <laughs> we made it. So thank you all for watching, smash that like button, hit subscribe for future content as we'll be filming a lot here in the mountains. So I look forward to it and catch you all in the next one. Peace. All right, but real quick, take a look at this view. We got views on views here in the Smokies. It's epic. Thank you.